So uh, our next speaker is, is Shane McAuliffe, and I'd like to welcome Shane to the webinar. Shane is a third generation pig producer in County Kerry. He has uh, four high health farms, including Ireland's first freedom farrowing farm. He has a master's in pig health with the Royal Veterinary College, where his studies looked at the association between disease status and performance, respiratory lesions, antibiotic use, and biosecurity practices in Irish pig farms. He has been a member of the IFA National Pig Committee for the last four years, where he works on pig health and welfare issues, and has also been secretary of the Irish Pig Health Society since 2012. Shane is a member of Animal Health Ireland's Pig Health Check Implementation Group, an advisory group member of the Safe Food AMU project, and a stakeholder group member of the SWAB Surveillance, Welfare and Biosecurity of Farmed Animals project. In 2019, he became an EU pig ambassador for his work on community management. And in 2017, he was awarded with the All-Star Animal Health Intensive Livestock Production Award for his work managing Interchem Ireland's Pig Herd Health Plan. Shane is a guest lecturer in pig production in many third level institutions and is also a regular contributor to Pig World magazine in the UK and Swine Web in Canada. An advocate of pig welfare, he works part time for Easy Fix Ireland, developing and providing pig welfare solutions for farmers all over the world. Now, Shane, I know we're 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 always paranoid about the broadband going. If uh, if the sound or sorry, if the if the sound gets bad, I might uh, interrupt you and ask you to just turn off your webcam. But we'll hope for the best and we'll uh, we'll start off uh, with all guns blazing, video, sound, presentation, everything. So, are you okay to take the presentation from there, Shane? I am, Michael. You can see my screen there. You can. I can see your screen. I can hear you loud and clear at the moment. Anyway, so Brilliant. we'll 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 I'll I'll interrupt you if there's any problems. Anyway, so thanks. Great. Thanks, Michael. Uh, thanks, Michael, again for the introduction, and uh, thank you to the department for having me here tonight um, for bringing this initiative together, particularly uh, Superintending Veterinary Inspector uh, Dr. Damien Barrett. Um, I'm going to talk about biosecurity bio on pig farms. Um, just to recap there what Michael said, I'm um, a third generation pig farmer in County Kerry. We are operating four high health, high welfare farms, uh, two of which are integrated, meaning that the uh, breeding and rearing of pigs takes place on the one site. And then the other two consist of a breeding site and a finisher site. Um, we are farmers and shareholders in the Truly Irish brand. And we are also uh, beef, tillage and forestry farmers. Um, both here in Kerry and in Shinron in County Offaly. Uh, we have pedigree Aubrac, Salir and Shirley Herbs. Uh, my master's um, was my most recent uh, qualification, which I finished last year. I was with the Royal Veterinary College um, and I work part time with Easy Fix Ireland. Um, they provide pig welfare solutions for farmers around the world. And my role involves um, traveling worldwide to provide technical assistance to um, to our distributors and working with animal welfare scientists and researchers. So going back to basics then, biosecurity and pig production. What is biosecurity? Well, basically it's any practical measures to prevent infection entering a farm, within a farm or within a local area or country. And biosecurity is quite complex and every farm is different. So that's why um, a farm needs to have a detailed planned program which must be implement, implemented by the staff. Healthy pigs are more productive, they have improved welfare, improved efficiency and improved productivity. And biosecurity is cost effective. It might be seen as a cost but in the end the economics stand out for themselves. So I like this um, uh, image from the Royal Vet College and this explains the different levels of biosecurity uh, showing the chain of command for disease prevention. So we have what we call Supra International. That's the World Health Organization, the uh, World Organization for Animal Health, the OIE, and the FAO. Then international biosecurity is um, at EU level that are, uh, imp that are measures implemented by the European Commission. National, um, here in Ireland, we would have the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine, who um, are in charge of national biosecurity. And then you have local biosecurity, which is implemented by farmers, vets, and other stakeholders. So starting with national biosecurity, and these are two photos um, that I came that I took on my travels. The first one there on the left-hand side is 
um, a poster from Cork Airport in Lithuanian, uh, just mentioning about how it's illegal to bring uh, pig meat into um, Ireland. Um, the one on the right hand side is a picture of my shoes being disinfected at Dublin Airport. Um, of course, if you're in contact with livestock abroad, you have to declare this um, on entry into our into our country. And it, 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 even if there's no one there at the Department of Agriculture desk in So I always tell other farmers who are traveling abroad and, and visiting farms, please, when you return, pick up that phone and tell the department that you've been in contact with livestock abroad. Um, in that case there, I was um, on a farm in Italy, which was positive for Jeske's disease. It's a disease that we've eradicated in Ireland many years ago. So because of that, um, my shoes were taken and disinfected. And of course, also um, our airliners, um, Irish airlines have a built-in intercom um, in the planes. And there is actually a pre-recorded message reminding people to present themselves to the Department of Agriculture if they've been in livestock, with, in contact with livestock abroad. It's not always heard on flights, but um, please do request that it is uh, played because the more that it's uh, played, the more chance we have of keeping disease out. So I'm going to talk tonight um, about one of our farms, Parnagira Pig Breeders, and I'm going to take uh, somewhat of a virtual tour through the farm, but looking at sorry, the different biosecurity uh, practices at each stage. Sorry, sorry so, Shane, can I just break in there? You wouldn't just turn off your webcam there and just yeah. take us through the rest of the audio. The sound is just breaking up a little bit, so we might get a bit of an improvement if you go audio only. Thanks, Shane. Great. Okay, thanks, Michael. Um, so what I'm doing is giving a uh, virtual tour of one of our farms. It's a 1,000 sow integrated unit. It was built in 2009 and it's producing about 25,000 pigs a year. It's negative for all um, the, the main pig diseases such as MHIO, which is mycoplasma pneumonia, APP and PRRS. We have seven staff there and it's a home. We also have our home milling operation there uh, producing feed for our own farm and for our different other farms. Uh, you can take a virtual tour on YouTube, just search Partner Gear Pig Breeders and you'll find an, a 15 minute video there. Uh, so the first stop is site security and you need to have a secure perimeter of fence uh, around your farm to exclude wildlife. Um, it's also important to have um, notices at the gate with your, the uh, phone number of your manager. You need to limit casual visitors, limit deliveries as much as possible. And also the carcass disposal bin, sh bin should be kept outside the farm. Unfortunately, with livestock, you'll have dead stock. So in our case, we have it kept outside the farm, meaning that the carcass disposal truck doesn't have to come anywhere near the farm. Um, I'm just going to share uh, Sorry, uh, before I before my next slide, just talking about vehicles. Um, ourselves, we're quite lucky in that we have our own haulage company. So that means that we carry out our own transport, whether that is taking pigs to the slaughterhouse, delivering a feed, um, delivering a slurry and so on. And because of that, we have complete control of the biosecurity of our vehicles. And we have uh, vehicle cleaning logs, which detail the um, hygiene and sanitation practices of the trucks and the trailers after every visit to the farm. So just going back to the, um, the perimeter fence, which I mentioned, this is a photo I took from a pig farm in South Africa, um, where of course, African swine fever is endemic. And you can see there, there's a fence all the way around the farm. But in this case, you can see the loading chute is actually coming out through that fence. So they actually don't have, um, there's no way of the pig transporter to come in contact with the rest of the farm. So that's just a best practice example. And another best practice example I wanted to mention is Irish fur farms. Um, Irish Ming farmers are um, very, very well versed when it comes to biosecurity practices and they run high health operations. And this is a photo that I took on a visit to one of the fur farms as I do a bit of work in mink welfare. Uh, you can see there that there's the, the fence around the farm, the footpath and so on. So signs and disinfection points. This is what you'll see before you come into our farm, the, the different signs warning you about what measures you need to, to take. And also the you'll see a photo there and the footpath, disinfection footpath on the left hand side. So the visitor protocol. 
to come onto our farms, you need to be 72 hours pig free. You need to sign the visitor book stating that. If you're coming in from abroad, you have to take extra precautions. Um, this year, it's been slightly easier to control that because any essential visitors we've had in the farm, we've actually had to keep them in quarantine for two weeks uh, due to COVID before they actually come onto the farm. Um, we do a lot of media work here with, with different TV programs and so on. So if you're bringing in cameras or phones, we have disinfectant wipes so uh, you can disinfect them. You'll see there in the photo our uh, visitor book, thermometer, which we've needed in, in these COVID times, and also hand sanitizer. The next stage is showering in and showering out. And this is required um, by both visitors and actually all our staff. So in the mornings, our staff shower in and they shower out again in the evening. And you have two separate areas. On one side where you're coming in is known as the dirty area. So this is where you leave all your own clothes. Then you go through the shower and on the other side, we will have our clothing, underwear, socks and, and boots for you. Um, we also advise that you pay particular attention to shampooing your hair. We actually have a waterproof timer stuck on the, um, on the side of the showers with um, a suction cup so that you press it and after three minutes it beeps. So that tells you that you've had enough uh, time in the shower and you're clean. For people that come on the farm and don't want to go into see the pigs, we have a viewing area. Uh, upstairs and what we have there is CCTV in all the pig houses so you can look at our TV screens looking at pigs in the different sections of the farm and um, you still need to be pig free and we will provide you with disposable clothing and um, that you will throw on over your own clothes. So internal biosecurity refers to any practices within the farm uh, to prevent the spread of disease. So this is just a Google Earth image of the farm, and you'll see that there's five different houses. So the, what we've done is we have subdivided each house, and this makes it easy to facilitate the movement of pigs and emptying up the rooms for washing. So on the top there, you'll see the dry sow house, then you have the farrowing rooms, then the wiener section, and then the last two sheds are the finisher rooms. And this is just a, a closer look at that map. Uh, showing that what we what we implement is called an all-in, all-out policy. So starting there on the left-hand side, you have the loose sow house. So the sows come into the farrowing room um, about a week before they're due to uh, give birth. And then uh, four weeks later, their piglets move from the farrowing room out one way straight into the wiener rooms. And the sows then move back uh, to the dry sow house. So there's doors on each side of all of our buildings. So, uh, and again, the, the pigs then in the wiener section, they're there for a number of weeks, moved onwards to the finisher house. And then you'll see the arrow on the bottom right. That means when they're, when they're leaving the farm. So burden road and control is very important. Um, both of them are vectors for a lot of important pig diseases like African swine fever, Bordetella, Brucella, Clostridia, E. coli, erysipelas, Lawsonia, Lepto, Pastorella, Rotavirus, Salmonella and Streptococcus. So it is important that we keep birds and rodents out. And I'm showing a photo there of um, outside one of the wiener rooms. And as you can see, the way that our um, pig farms are built is that there's no way of uh, either rodents or birds actually getting into the house, into the, the actual pigs. Um, on other farms, on uh, which have slightly older buildings, it's quite effective to simply put up some bird netting, meaning that that, they're, um, that the birds can't get access. Um, your worry, of course, is the feeding areas that you don't want rodents or birds um, close to where the, the pigs are being fed. So going back to our tour, we have the dry sow house. This is where the mature females are. They're grouped housed in groups of over 100. Um, we have electronic sow feeders or ESFs. And what that means is that they're fed electronically um, in, in, little, um, in little feeders. So each sow has an RFID chip and the computer recognizes what sow she is. She's let into the feeder and she's given the, um, the amount of feed that she needs. Um, also, our staff can control that, meaning that um, sows which are due to farrow 
when they're going into the feeder, they'll come out into the passageway rather than going back into the pen. Um, it's also the same for vaccination. We can uh, change it so that the ones who need their vaccines come out into the passageway, meaning we don't need to go into the pen, disturbing the, the cells, looking for the ones which are um, due to farrow or due to be vaccinated. And then we move into the farrowing house. Um, hygiene, again, is of critical importance here because you want to minimize handling of the piglets. For example, if you are treating a, pig, a litter of piglets for scour, you don't want to be treating that group and then moving across to another litter to carry out any other husbandry procedures uh, like um, injecting them with, with iron. Um, so in that sense, hygiene is of most importance here in the farrowing house. Um, and something that we've had in recent years is intradermal vaccination, meaning that we can vaccinate the pigs and the sows intradermally because um, a concern we would have with needles and syringes is that they actually act as vectors for spreading pathogens. You might inject a piglet with a vaccine and that pig might be sick and then you're um, transferring the pathogen to the next pig. So um, we are vaccinating with HIPRA um, vaccines on, um, on the cells. You'll see the hypodermic on the right hand side and MSDs idle there on the left hand side. Um, and you're able to give a concentrated dose intradermally and it also generates a report so you know how many pigs were vaccinated and how long it took to do it. Disinfection between the different sections of the farm is also quite important. Um, on the left hand side there you'll see a simple foot bath in the farrowing section and also there on the right hand side you'll see a photo of uh, a boot wash. So the idea is you wash your boots to remove any, any feces or any other debris that might be on them and then you dip them into, your, into the foot bath to disinfect them before you walk through that section of the farm. Washing again is very very important. As I mentioned the, 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 the sow and the piglets leave the farrowing house after four Um, the, the same with the, the wiener section, they leave after another eight weeks and then it's 12 weeks with the finisher section. So when a room gets emptied, all the pigs move out, they move into the next section. Um, you remove any organic material, you power wash it, you let it dry, you disinfect it, you disinfect it again and then let it dry. that um, the room is ready for the next batch of pigs. And we, we're also able to take swabs to look at the bacterial load to ensure that washing has been done correctly. Uh, as I said, pigs are moved to the wiener house. Um, it's all under cover on our farm, so there's no uh, risk of any, any pathogens reaching them through, through birds or rodents or feces or anything like that. Um, and they go through that little weighing scales where we weigh all the uh, batches together, all the litters, and then they move to the weaning section which is uh, this part. Um, so they're wean pigs, they're there for eight weeks, and then they're moved to the next section, which is finish house, and it's just a photo of uh, the finish of house. Now, unfortunately, we will have sick livestock, so that's not the farm have hospital facilities. And these are basically little isolation rooms where we have much stricter biosecurity measures. And um, have clothing and separate boots in that section so that when you're walking in there, you have to change into those uh, specific clothes. And we visit them at the end of the working round. So if any of our staff come in the morning and check the different rooms, um, they must check the hospital section at the end of uh, visiting all the different rooms in their section. And when you're pulling out um, a pig from their group and putting that pig into the hospital, it's very important that you should not return that pig to, to the group because that pig will have a risk of transferring pathogens back into that group again. Now, something important to note with commercial pig farms is that we operate closed herds. Um, a fully closed herd has a substantially lower risk of disease introduction and all commercial herds to use artificial insemination. You'll see a photo there of um, our AI fridge. So there, there what you can see are in fact bags of pig semen. They are delivered um, on the different days of the week, fresh from Ireland's pig AI stations. And having a closed herd is something that we've actually implemented on our beef herds as well. We actually don't buy any um, cattle from the mart. 
we um, we have a closed herd where we're breeding our own female replacements. And of course, another example of a closed herd for, for cattle is that you'd have a double electric fence between yourself and your neighbors. So that's just an example of what we learn from pigs can be implemented in other sectors. So Joe br briefly mentioned the biocheck uh, scoring system. Um, it is a risk-based online biosecurity scoring system. It was developed by Professor Jerome de Wolf of the Veterinary Epidemiology Unit at the University of Ghent. And it's a questionnaire which focuses both on your external biosecurity and your internal biosecurity. Your scores are given then in percentages along with your country average and your global average. And this slide just shows um, one of our own farms and the results that we got. So you'll see there that the external biosecurity score we got was 81% which is versus an uh, Irish country average of 79% and a global average of 70%. Similarly, uh, internal biosecurity, we scored 75% versus Ireland's average of 68% and your global average of 64%. And as Joe mentioned, this is now um, going to be carried out yearly as part of the new Borbia Pig Assurance Scheme. And again, this is thanks to funding from TESA, which is implemented by Animal Health Ireland. So we, I've talked about biosecurity, but what does that mean for your farm? Well, the PatServe pig project from Chagas found that uh, mycoplasma pneumonia costs about five euros per pig. If you have PRRS, that's costing about three euros 65 per pig. And this project um, by Maria Rodriguez de Costa showed that lower mortality and increased average daily gain was consistent with better disease management. And the Patser Pig Project um, also led on to a lot of my work with my masters. My masters looked at the, the different parameters of, um, of about 36 different pig herds in Ireland, looking at their biosecurity, uh, their antibiotic use, and so on. And again, what I found in, in my studies was that um, farms with higher internal biosecurity had lower erysipelas uh, infection in finishers and lower PRRS infection in the wieners, which probably indicates that they did have a strict all-in, all-out policy. So to conclude then, biosecurity is not an, addition, an additional cost to farms. It improves your health status, it lowers your antimicrobial use, which again is important as we face the global uh, challenge that is AMR. You'll have lower treatment costs and uh, that'll affect um, your spending on, on veterinary fees and drugs and of course it means you'll have higher productivity. Your pigs will grow faster and they'll be much happier. So that's the end of my presentation. Uh, thanks very much for everyone for listening in. Thank you very much indeed Shane and uh... Oh, that was very impressive. Now I didn't get to see your your uh, your your trial run the other day, and uh, I'll definitely be taking the Park Nagira YouTube tour. Um, I find it fascinating that there's such a transparent culture in the company as regards people getting to see exactly what goes on inside it. Um, 